Um, good evening. It's so wonderful to see two former board members in our audience this evening, Mr. Wadsworth and Ms. Kelly Jensen. Thank you for being here. Um, I like to make my comments that may be considered a little controversial and I have a whole board here so we can loop back through and, and, and give everybody an opportunity to, to um, say what they uh, need to so I don't always have the last word. But I'll start this evening by saying uh, I want to thank everyone for all these invites I'm getting. Um, there are so many celebrations and this is my favorite time of year because you see kids moving from one grade to the other and then out the door into an adult world where they're going to college or some CTE program and, and going to on to a, a, an independent, productive adult life. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. Um, I attended the final Los Angeles County School Trustees Association governance training session on May 9th. This four-part training was offered to all Los Angeles County School Board trustees free of charge. It was a nice touch-up for the four-day California School Boards Association governance training that I attended with my board colleagues several years ago, including Ms. Jensen and Mr. Jorgensen. Um, Again, we'll keep this fairly short. I need to clarify a couple things from the last meeting so everybody out there understands. I do, first off, I do have an IQ of more than three and everyone in my family, regardless of what the perception may be, has an IQ of more than three. There's some discussion about why I stepped down off the dais. When I stepped down off the dais, it's because I don't want to participate in something that's happening that I feel may present a liability to the district or worse yet, me personally. Some people are under the misconception that you can sit up here and you have this privilege that elected officials seem to enjoy. The law tells you that as long as you think you're operating within your privilege, meaning I think I'm doing a good thing, it's a pretty loose parameter. But when I start mentioning names of employees and and diving into that and doing extemporaneous reviews from up here and talking about, I only have interest in one employee and I have a 20% interest in this employee and that's the superintendent. I don't run him. He's hired to be the educational leader in this district. I'm not a principal. I am not the director of education. I don't do investigations. You will find me very seldom at a school site, unless I'm invited to go there to enjoy some celebration, and if there's anyone I have influence in or more so influence over me, it's Miss T every other Friday when I get my daughter off the bus and get the Miss T lecture. But short of that, I do not involve myself in the undercurrents of the district. So if I step off the dais, that might be an indicator that I'm starting to feel uncomfortable that I'm being drugged into. So I don't go into worlds where at the end of the day some attorney says you've outstepped your bounds. You personally have left the district exposed to, to a legal issue because those legal issues result in payouts. And you know what the funding source is? That is the money that goes to educate all of our children. And yes, I do have a child at the school district or at, at Vasquez. I can't remember. Ms. T helped me. But at the end of the day, I don't know that the Los Angeles County Registrar uh, requires that the minute your child crosses the stage that you step off the board. I'm not familiar with that. So. Um, there was a reference last time in an, an agenda item about uh, sports um, a, a facilities, a request for like a five to ten year sports program facilities. Uh, budget uh, and uh, you, you heard me vote no on that and I want to explain why there were references to what this process would look like um, who the stakeholder participants would be and references to some employee positions that don't even exist in the district at this time now in my experience I will make comments up here that kind of nuance I might tell you something like I don't know where we're gonna put all the kids because 
before I got here, this used to be a library in two bedrooms, and now it's whatever this is. So I need floor space. So I tell the superintendent, I think we need floor space. I think you've heard me say floor space, right? I don't ask for an agenda item. I imagine at some point he'll figure that out. But in my level, in my experience, the way to do it is to just have a have a one-on-one -on -one superintendent say, This is really important to me. And that's how you do it. Because here's what happens when you start making extemporaneous requests from up here. Those requests can be leveraged to make staff feel like that board member just gave me a directive. And if I don't get that directive done or within the time frame to be responsive, I can be characterized in the community as Una being unresponsive, I, I don't give the community what they want. I'm not capable of running the superintendent. And typically, these extemporaneous requests come along with no consideration of staff. How many staff hours are available right now in your position control for extra projects that I want to bring up? Do you have 100 hours for me? If I said to you, I think my project is 100 hours. Do you think you could pull that together right now? Is there the budget for it? Is there a DSA approval? Is there anything? No, I just want it. So you can bet that when the strategic plan comes, you just heard the superintendent tell you this is the strategic plan what that is, it's a whole, whole district-wide plan, and it takes all kinds of little pieces. It takes sports, it takes special education, it takes community outreach, it takes facilities, and it puts all that together, and it's coming from the community, I would hope. I went to the SPAD meeting. Other than that, I, I don't involve myself in it. I don't. It's not up to me to tell the community what to think. But at the end of the day, when that plan is rolled out, we are the last ears to hear it. And at that point, I can say, hey, you know, there's a concern about the sports groups. They're making huge strides. They really are. Look at what's happening at the junior high. So it is really important. It's an attendance draw. But here's a problem I have. Every fall, this room fills with teachers. And what they tell me is, we've got so many kids in our classroom. They have gone through several years without any any formal support, classroom structured support, where you've got a teacher up there looking at an individual student and saying, you know what, I, I know up here that kid's struggling. I need to spend some time with that. You can't see that over a computer. But every year, I don't be smart teachers for coming in here. It is what it is. If you want high scores, the teachers have to be able to reach the kids. You cannot jam a bunch of kids in a classroom and expect that the teacher who can't reach them is going to produce results in high scores, especially when you have differentiated learning going on and all this other stuff happening. So what do I do? I need floor space. I keep saying that. I need floor space. And I need funding for teachers to fill those floor spaces. You hear Lester talking about onboarding people. So I think he's expecting that I'm blabbing about floor space, when he gets in his chair, he's going to be concerned with onboarding people properly, people coming from a different site. It doesn't help anybody to leave one school just because you're upset about something come and find out that this one is no better or worse. I need everybody, everybody to understand what I do on this board. It has never changed in the last six years, but besides that, I had all this written. I'd, everybody's entitled to their opinion. But what I have to do on this board, and I have always done on this board, is to work to do my best to make sure that the staff of this district, under the direction of whoever sits in that chair, has the funding and the resources they need to let that person and everybody that supports each other Everybody has the money they need. That's what I do. That's what I continue to do. If I was handy to have around when the charters were 
doing what they do and we were winging money out. Somebody just told you that I was good at that. Well, I'm probably pretty good at running money when there's something to be run. But that's what I do. I don't dive into the sites. I don't tell principals what to do. I don't hyper-involve myself in investigations. I'm not a lawyer. I listen to what this gentleman has to say. And I, I think you all heard tonight that he had a, su he had a successful evaluation. And that was based on some parameters that were put out last year. And he's got some new ones. So the rest of this stuff is just nonsense. Why dump, why dump five gallons of gas on three matches? I'm done. Um, the personnel action report is not a celebration of people onboarding or leaving us. And so it would always be my hope um, that when it comes to the end of the year or I notice that there is uh, an event coming up with, for new staff, but I would hope that the district office would uh, reach out to employees that are leaving us to ask if they would engage in being recognized for their service because a personal action report and, and some of the details that go there have nothing to do with the level of service someone has given this district. Thank you. My, my first obvious concern is, is this position linked or associated to other positions like a supervisory position you would have short of overtime that people under would fall within whatever percentile? Is this linked to any other no. position? Okay. Is this person represented by any of the associations? Um, how has the work with contractors been? Oh, Perfect. Yeah. Okay, so let me ask you this. Knowing that school psychologists typically deal, it would be my understanding they're dealing with uh, assessments for special education. Would that be? Correct. Okay. Um, it, I'm wondering, in, in retaining some of these people, is the environment conducive to retention? Let me give you an example. Let's say that I know a kid, and I talked about this last time, you've got to kind of go back in my movies and watch them. I talked about SED, I talked about it at the uh, State uh, Advisory Commission on Special Education. They're discussing SED cases, which is severe emotional uh, problem, let's leave it at that. And so what happens is you have people who are violent, they'll, they'll hurt themselves, they'll hurt others. It takes forever to get an assessment. and then. Uh, the, the, the places they go are very restrictive. It's almost like a state institution, but they end up going out of state and they end up being um, um, the district that can't uh, take care of their needs ends up paying for it. And rather than, I talked about the state model of coming in and having the state say, okay, on these low incidence cases like this, we'll absorb the cost out of the big pot instead of punishing this rural district. And on top of that, we'll see to the oversight, because it's kind of weird to me, if I can't oversee, uh, if I can't give a student services, what gives me the capability to fly to Utah every once in a while and look this kid over and have the people up there saying, you're just trying to move them out of here because it's costing you $250,000 a kid there. So I think if you took the money out of it, like we've taken the cash registers out of the classroom or the lunchroom, what you will find is sometimes you have psychologists and directors of special education caught between somebody below them going, this kid really, really needs some help. You can have a resistant parent that says, I want that kid mainstreamed while the kid's beating up everybody in the second grade class. That was just an example. Uh, and everybody's in danger. But then up on top, you got board members that all they hear about special education, oh, another payout, and then the superintendent's caught in the middle, and a psychologist, rather than being able to give a professional opinion that's respected and supports the people below and is supported above, is not an environment for retention. So when we're calling in and talking about retention, that's the one I want to talk about. Why is this district unable to retain psychologists? Is a work environment appropriate? That's not a question that you should answer in this room. I already know the answer, thanks. That's my comment. Okay, so this had come up before, um, and I think I asked for it to be tabled. 
because there were a couple things I want to know. Um, I do not want employees being attacked on a school bus, and there were some concerns going back to these emotional issues and behavioral issues, and sometimes people just have issues that, well, they're, they're, they're out, everybody understands what a manifest, a manifest determination is. People do things and they get expelled or suspended and you're supposed to kind of take a look as what they did, is that related to why they did it and you know that kind of thing, the thing we know about, right? Sometimes it ends up back there. But is what happens when my child is a normal child without disability, without uh, an IEP or, or an eligibility and attacks another child on the bus. What happens with that footage? Okay, so let's say, for example, somebody's looking at the records. We have drive cams at work. They trigger off of G forces and stuff. I see people doing stupid things. When you, when you have a cam in your vehicle, don't use the sixth letter the minute your bumper hits something because I get to see it as your manager and I get to count you about language and your driving thing. But what I'm saying is, what what um, duty does the district have if the camera captures inappropriate behavior by a staff or a student? So do I call the, the sheriff's department and provide them with the, the stuff? What, what, what happens? Just like anything that's supposed to happen now. Are the, uh, are the associations in generally in support of this? Has this been run by them? Is there any, anything that causes the associations to believe, believe that their privacy is being uh, in, impeded upon, impinged upon? Okay, so, so uh, please include that in your staff summary if you can the next time for the people who don't hear it this time. Um, does the community know that your kid is going to be filmed Okay, so anybody that's coming into the district, a new kid on the bus route will know. Correct. Believe me, I read this whole thing, I can read. And uh, I like it when it's verbalized, so somebody looks at me in the eye and asks my questions, thank you. A comment on the future agenda items. If we can take, for example, the sports facilities long-term plan I would hope that we're going to see the strategic plan and I would hope that there's a great deal of attention given to the suggestion that it's incorporated in there and I would hope that at the end of that presentation and robust discussion that the board member that was asked for this to be on here will be consulted as to whether or not the level of discussion is appropriate to his needs and if it needs to be carried forward on the agenda. Until that time, it will, I, I would suggest it remains on the agenda. There's